In this video series, we'll be following the multi-cloud demo guide, in which we'll do several things divided into three modules and three videos. All of them are based around a single application, Arcadia Finance, that has three modules and the guide is divided into three steps, easy to follow. You also have a choice of deploying into three different clouds or the same cloud in different VNets of VPCs. Bottom line, three modules that are going to three different clouds. Let's do it now. This guide has everything you need to get started in order to experience the layer seven, layer three connectivity, as well as analytics associated with multi-cloud networking. As mentioned, you can deploy these services into several clouds. Today we support AWS or Azure. You have everything here for the prerequisites. We will need to install some Terraform scripts, which we'll do shortly, and a scenario that outlines the Arcadia Finance application that we can get all together with multi-cloud networking. Let's start with the first module, which is deploying the backend application written in PHP in Cloud A. In our case, we'll be using AWS. So we'll be deploying that using the Terraform scripts, followed by HTTP load balancer configuration inside a five distributed cloud to enable SSL offloading. This is the end result. The Arcadia Finance front end application completely deployed, connected via HTTP load balancer with some placeholders that you can see here coming soon. One is for the transaction module, one is for the refer a friend module. Both of those will be covered in the subsequent videos. For now, let's get started with module one. Deploying anything in this guide requires running Terraform scripts for the specific cloud. So each of the modules has either AWS or Azure to choose from. In this case, for the first module, we'll pick AWS. And really it is just following the whole flow, the whole instruction step-by-step step, using CloudFormation, for example, to deploy a full stack. Make sure that you are able to access your AWS account and provide credentials for the Terraform to be able to do all the work and quite literally following the instructions step-by-step. But first, before we do any kind of work or deployment, we need to clone the Git project. After that, we are able to modify the Terraform scripts easily on our local machine and set the variables that will be required for the scripts to run correctly on our machine. Now, this, of course, assumes that you have Terraform already configured for Linux, Mac OS or Windows in the probably Linux subsystem for Windows if you're going that route. Bottom line, you need to have Terraform scripts working so you can issue a command like Terraform help, see some output. Remember that you can either mix and match clouds if you have access to more than one cloud. For example, you have AWS and Azure, so you can have module one on AWS or Azure, module two on a different cloud, etc. But if you have on only access to one cloud, such as AWS, you can do so as well. Uh, the scripts will deploy the modules into different VPCs. For Azure, it will deploy them into different VNets. So now we're following the instructions here for the first module as if we're deploying everything into our Cloud A in Amazon. It makes things simple. For module two, we'll do deployment in Azure. All right, the first step that we'll be doing here is creating a service account in AWS the yaml file that comes with the project already contains all the things that you need to do to create that service account you just need to specify the yaml file to upload a new template file uh, in the create stack interface for cloud formation so just choose the yaml file it contains all the things that are needed to um, to expose the aws infrastructure to terraform scripts uh, this will be apparent in a few seconds. We will be given some information as an output. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to deploy. Of course, we sped up this for the purpose of the video. Um, just give it a stack name. In this case, name and password and policy name. Uh, these three things are needed in order to make the connection between Terraform and the service account later on. You can skip through the following two screens, acknowledge the CloudFormation resource creation, uh, and uh, essentially in a couple minutes, you will have everything you need to get started with the automated creation of resources for the module one in AWS. Azure follows a very similar set of steps. So um, now we already have some output, uh, which is the information that's needed to populate uh, our uh, scripts within Terraform. 
let's copy each one of the values that has been provided into corresponding script. Now again, we've chosen AWS for cloud A, and we will go into the Terraform script file, uh, var.tf, find the correct variable and populate it. You can just follow along and see which of these variables of uh, modifying uh, in the process. Uh, some of the things are obviously blurred out, uh, but fundamentally it should be pretty straightforward just to copy and paste the different keys from the AWS output of the uh, of the templates that's that's been deployed and run the service the service template within CloudFormation. For the first part, we just need the access key and the secret key. Both of these um, options we're going to paste into the Terraform script. Okay, so far so good. We we're able to create the service account and copy these two variables in. The third one is generated by the tool that we built for this guide. It's a DNS tool. It generates all these fancy zone names uh, randomly, and you will need to have this tool open throughout the rest of the guide. So make sure that you do not close this window. We will copy the zone name, update this inside our script. And next we will configure a few things for our API connection to a distributed cloud. First, we'll need to set up the URL for our tenant. And that is really easy to get from the five distributed cloud. It's just the tenant name before the console piece of the URL. In our case, we're using TME lab works. We'll take that update the info on the API URL and a few other steps that need to be completed are related to the certificate that we'll be using to uh, access the distributed cloud securely to generate the certificate we'll go under the administration section of the portal the fi distributed cloud console and add credential of the type api certificate punch in our password and once confirmed pick an expired date so very simple step this will download a certificate to your machine this certificate will need to be copied into the working directory or working folder of the target cloud that you are working on so where you're updating the var.tf the terraform script this is the same folder where you're copying the certificate into so that the script can access the certificate when it runs we also need to specify the path to the certificate in the script itself. So copy the name and update that value in the script. That is pretty much it for the Terraform script updates. The very last step that we need is to set up the certificate password as a variable in our machine. I'm going to do just that. And after setting it, make sure it's set up to the password you specified in distributed cloud console, obviously. Now that it is set, we are ready to execute our Terraform script. It's just two commands. Oh yeah, make sure that you are in the right directory. Uh, don't make the same mistake I did here. So in this case, again, we're in a Terraform root directory. Let's go into cloud A and I am using AWS. Um, so select that cloud. And a quick way to check is to make sure that our certificate is there, which it is. Now we're ready to run the Terraform init script, which will initialize all of the plugins, download all the goodies that we need to have running for Terraform to execute, uh, which is the, the modules for AWS, for a distributed cloud. All of this is uh, done through this one step. Terraform init only needs to be done once at the beginning of this project, so we're not gonna keep rerunning these. So once we're done with the initializing let's run the terraform apply and this command will go through and run the playbook uh, beginning to end all of the different steps in the script which is connecting to a aws account connecting to the uh, service account that we could just that we just created earlier applying all of the transformation i sped up this up quite significantly so you can see that this is a now complete and our AWS configuration is done at this point for the cloud A. Now know that this again takes probably 10, 15, 20 minutes to deploy at a minimum. 
This is sped up quite a bit. You can check the status of your deployment. If we go under a five distributed cloud sites, cloud sites, we'll be able to see the cloud that we're deploying. Cloud A, it's now uh, online and it's been provisioning before. This also takes some time. So um, be patient, grab yourself a cup of coffee and let the process complete. Now that Cloud A is online, we can proceed to the next step, the final step of this module, which is creating a HTTP load balancer for our deployment. It is, again, a simple exercise of following the flow of the guide for the first module to specify all of the details that are necessary. Now for the domain, um, remember that window that we kept open, which is the DNS tool, we'll be copying the zone name from the tool and pasting it here. We'll be also using this tool multiple times, so please don't close it. Setting up the options for the certificate. Uh, the We will be using HTTPS here because we are doing SSL offloading. So make sure you select HTTPS certificate. The next step is to configure an origin pool, which is a set of endpoints that are grouped as a resource pool to be used in our load balancer config. Uh, and here we will make sure to point to our origin server, which is the instance deployed in AWS, and also make sure that the port 80 is selected because this is the port that is exposed by the service that's running in AWS. We also need to provide the IP address of the origin server, which is the deployment in AWS as well. And this is a standard IP that we'll be using for all of our deployments in all of the modules, 10.0.20.100. Here, we have to make sure to select the right site. So Cloud A is the site that we deployed. This is, we'll, this is what will identify the AWS deployment. And finally, make sure inside network is turned on. Now it's just a few uh, clicks to apply across all of the configurations that we looked at before and our load balancer is configured. Okay, and now that we have done this, the last step is to finish configuring the DNS setting for our application. For that, we'll go under Manage Configuration and scroll down to the DNS records for our load balancer. So make sure you're not selecting the host name, you are selecting the, the value of the Acme Challenge for the DNS record and paste that into the tool in order for our DNS um, value to be updated with the correct Acme challenge. That way our load balancer will now associate with the DNS zone that we have here. The tool handles this on the back end. You don't have to do anything. And in just a few minutes, we will see that change propagate. So now our application and specifically the load balancer we just configured is accessible via the domain that we specified. And you can see the certificate is also valid and showing green. So let's take a look at the core application by opening the domain that was specified by the tool. You'll see that it's loading just fine. And also the connection is secure. So the certificate is showing valid as well. Great. Now using the credentials also specified in the guide, let's go ahead and log into the application. So we can see the two parts uh, of the modules that have not been deployed yet are showing as coming soon. These are the two modules that we'll be adding next in the guide module two and three. We'll be using other networking to connect to the core application, the services that are running in Azure and running in another VPC within AWS in a subsequent chapter. So let's take a look at the load balancer again after some time, we will be seeing traffic coming through and we can get some analytics and information about the number of requests, the type of events that are being captured by the load balancer, as well as some very specific details on the browser types, device types, uh, throughput and status of the certificate as well. This gives you all the information at the fingertips that you need, um, including the top URLs and routes that are used by our application. At the same time, we can also go and take a look at the application site traffic or the app traffic to our um, origin. So we can see exactly how the, the Cloud A deployment is serving up the requests from the clients and the regional edges in the middle that are doing the SSL offloading, all improving the end user experience 
by lowering latency and improving the response time for the application. So we're done with module number one. In the next module, we'll configure a new service in AWS for the refer and a friend module, and we'll use HTTP layer seven load balancing to connect to our app.